Saturday, October the 29th is Breeders' Crown Night at Woodbine Mohawk Park. Eight Breeders' Crown races on the card. Tons of great wagering action, including a couple of $100,000 guaranteed pick fives. There's one in race one. There's one in race six. Matt and I are going to look at race number six, and it starts with the Breeders' Crown three-year-old Colt Trot Final. They're going for $600,000 U.S., and I'd say this is a pretty wide open field, Matt. And this might be one of the most wide open fields uh, of all of the uh, Breeders' Crown races for Friday and for Saturday. Uh, uh, certainly, you can make a case for most of these horses. Uh, as you can see by the, the lukewarm morning line favorite of Cool Papa Bell, uh, probably will go off around three to one. I, I, think, I think these odds are pretty much, you know, spot on. In terms of uh, you know how the horse is going to be bet, which means you have a great betting race, and there's going to be a lot of uh, I believe with the 20 cent minimums in this pick five, you're going to have a lot of people that are uh, spreading around <laughs> just trying to survive in this leg and hoping for a price. And uh, I uh, kind of unfortunately I fall into that category as I go pretty deep in my ticket, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean definitely one of the more uh, contentious races uh, of the entire, not only the entire sequence but the entire evening. One of the elimination winners is King of the North. We're going to take a look at his victory last week. Uh, he had a little bobble at the start, but eventually uh, Mark McDonald got him to the front. You could see, also worth noting, is the morning line favorite in this race, uh, Cool Papa Bell, is all the way in the back and last. He, he's uh, on the far, far outside and is going to try to close in and do a good enough job to make the final. Uh, yeah, I mean, and now that you're in the final, uh, he's, he's kind of stuck outside again. Uh, will he be that far back? Uh, probably not, or at least out the mile, but moving early on. You know, we saw King of the North at a, at a big price, uh, wiring the elimination field. Uh, now you're going to get a, a obviously a much lower price, maybe a little higher than the ninth, uh, seven to two on the morning line. But uh, um, I don't know what his ta Mark McDonald's taxes would be. I think it was kind of easier from the spot he did last week in an elimination where there might figure to be less movement for him to get to the front and pretty much be unpressured. Uh, you got to figure there's going to be some more lead changes here. And from the, the inside rail spots, you know, I can see him uh, having some traffic issues. Uh, obviously he's got a legit shot. I did not, uh, I did not use him as one of my uh, quintet horses. So that I did use. I, I think probably, Half, maybe a little bit more than half the field could probably win the race. I ended up going three deep in here uh, on my ticket. I used Cool Papa Bell, who I just thought, you know, had no chance last week. I think you're going to see a much more forwardly placed effort uh, this time around with the, the Brutus Crown Trophy on the line. I like Slay a lot. You know, I, I thought he was a little flat last week, but he's, he's won here in the past. He's now two for two, first to second here. You know, he's always been a good trip horse, and I think there's opportunity for him to get a trip, whether he leaves or comes from off the pace. And uh, Brandon by Lindy's on my ticket. You saw him finishing second to King by the North. And he's just a solid horse that seems to show up uh, every single week. And uh, you know Yannick Jingra is going to put him in play. King of the North is usable. Fast as the wind, I guess, is usable. Double deceiver is usable. You know, but that's where I went. I see a trend here. This horse is usable. That horse is usable. Uh, I like Slay also as my top pick here. Uh, I think uh, Joe Bongiorno, uh, he's, he's, he's done a solid job uh, piloting this horse uh, for most of the season. And like you said, three back, uh, three back he won here at the Woodbine Mohawk Park. So uh, clearly he likes to, he likes the track surface and like you said, good spot. And, uh, you know, we'll offer a touch of value at uh, probably somewhere around five, six to one. I also use four other horses. Uh, the, I went with the they could win motif, fast as the wind, double deceiver, branded by Lindy, and uh, Cool Papa Bell, who, who uh, I kind of agree with you. It's like I, I kind of have to use them, especially if I'm going that deep. So five deep, but uh, I do like Slay as my uh, as my top choice. Cool Papa Bell is actually my top pick, and it's worth noting that this race and a couple of the others also have AE. So if one of these horses uh, scratch then the 11 or the 12 who aren't shown on your screen will move in. We're going to move on to race number seven. It's the Breeders' Crown final. Three-year-old Colt Pace 
They're going for $675,000. And all due respect to the other eight horses in the race, this kind of seems like a match race between By the Missile and Pebble Beach and may the best horse win. Uh, yeah, if you look at the morning line, eight to five and nine to five, uh, I think that's pretty much that's pretty much spot on. Uh, they will they will take all the money. Um, could they go off even money six to five, something like that? It's possible. I think you could flip a coin who's actually going to go off the favorites. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I struggle with this race. Uh, do I you know do I use both of them and uh, you know just to maybe almost hopefully guarantee that I get by this leg? Or do I take a stand and just use one of them? I end up taking a stand with uh, by the missile. Uh, I know what Pebble Breach brings to the table, but uh, by the missile is just uh, a horse that nobody even ever heard of uh, until he popped up, uh, you know, at the Meadows for the Adios. And he's just got better and stronger. And uh, Chris Page has done a great job. Uh, versatile, uh, big track, small track. Uh, I mean, you know, if I have to flip a coin, and it looks like a lot of people may, you know, may if they don't use both, they, they may end up flipping a coin. Uh, I'm going to go with by the missile. I just think uh, this will this will uh, put a stamp on what's been a, 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 a seems like a very quick season, uh, but a phenomenal season nonetheless. Well, I didn't flip a coin here. I use both of them. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll use the old gun to my head. I'd go with the two by the missile over Pebble Beach. Um, I, I think there's some more untapped uh, talent there that we haven't seen, but I, I don't know. I ended up using both because I couldn't decide between them. We're going to move on to race number eight. It's the Brutus Crown final. It's the open trot for $600,000. And this is a field of 11 here. So we had a nice uh, full field and uh, there were no elimination races last week, but I still found uh, some video to show. And the video we're going to show here is of the MGM Yonkers International Trot. We're picking up at a half, and that's a six horse there that's moving around into third right now is back of the neck, who's in this field. And the horse on the lead is Akuri D, who's in this field. And Akuri D wins some crazy fractions, Matt. <laughs> yeah, he was in front by uh, seven, eight lengths or something like that. And you can see, uh, you can see right, right now, he's, uh, you know, as they approach the, the mile marker, uh, he's pretty much. <laughs> Uh, Oki Swanstead uh, was driving is uh, you know completely done. Uh, back of the mech, Nick's a nice move, and uh, we saw Cox steal uh, one of the European horses, uh, make an even nicer move. And once he once he squeezed off the rail, and a kind of a controversial move, but so you see a Curie D, you know, backing up, he's all done. But back of the neck, uh, you know, I think that was a solid effort. He was he was out uh, all if if not almost every step of that race. Had to make a move around a, a, a stalled horse, you know, rally between horses on the turn. I thought he did a great job uh, to be second there. Uh, and that's just, just you know, another 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 solid effort from a solid trotter. Um, so he draws outside of basically his main competition here. What you could say is his main competition. Uh, does that uh, make things a little difficult? It's possible. But, um, you know, he deserves... Uh, he absolutely deserves, uh, you know, uh, to be on most people's tickets, I believe. Yeah, I, that's really what it came down to me. The, the eight hole is what makes me back up for a minute and think about back of the neck, so to speak. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm just worried as to what kind of trip. I, I spoke to driver Tim Tietrich. I don't get the impression that he's, you know, dying to leave with this horse. I mean, maybe he'll push away a little, but I don't get the impression he's firing out. So he's going to have to you know, kind of hope that he's going to get the right pace set up here. And he very well might. I mean, horses like Juju B and Rattle My Cage, Ambassador Hanover, um, Fashion Perenz, Frenzy. These are all horses that like to leave the gate. Akiri D, another one that likes to leave the gate. So it could certainly set up for him, Matt. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, I think the speed of the speed is two slots to his inside, Juju B. Uh, I think of all the horses you mentioned, he's... he's uh, um, I think the most likely to, to, to be taking a flyer right off the gate, uh, or at least, you know, maybe gets the first call off the gate, uh, which it could, could obviously alter Tim Tietrich's strategy with back of the neck. And, you know, I actually, I actually like Duchu B as my top spot, even though I'm not king him. I am going four deep. 
Uh, but again, my top pick is Juju B, and uh, we uh, we saw him get a, a very late start to his season, and and then he had that first start in a uh, an overnight event to Sayoto that did not go well. But but since that, he's just gotten progressively better and stronger, and I think he's now uh, peaking now uh, late in the season. And um, this may be this might be Juju B's time to shine. Uh, back of the neck is going in there with uh, as well. Ikiri D, we saw Oki Sponsor driving the source all along. He lists Dexter, Dexter Gunn now. Um, quite interesting. I don't know if that makes him now, you know, maybe an underlay. I think it, it is a little bit. And also, it's, a, it's academic, who kind of flies under the radar, but he shows up every week. And in an international trot, he had the eight hole in a 10 horse field, going him out of order, and he managed to pass a whole bunch of horses and finish third. And he's listed 10 to 1 with uh, that Dave Miller guy. I think he knows how to get around the track. So I'm going to go four deep. Drew should be on top, but also using the five, six, and eight. Five, seven, and eight. I have one, me, com- with Juju be the I have one comment on Juju B here, and that is I'm firmly, I really like the horse, Juju B, but I'm firmly against playing him in this race. I feel like we've seen four starts from him. He has one really good effort, and it came at the Red Mile. And all his qualifiers that were good were at the Red Mile. I, I think maybe, I don't know if he maybe has some foot issues, something going on there where maybe that track, you know, suits him best. And I'm not so sure I want a short price on him, you know, well, short price, anything under, you know, five to one on him. And he's certainly going to be probably around two to one, I would think. So I'm going to pass on Juju B. I went too deep. I have back of the neck on my ticket. My top pick is a Curie D. I mean, I really didn't like the fact that uh, Oki's Fonset said jumped off and Dexter Dunn's on now because that's going to kill whatever price I was going to get. But if you go back and you look at his Maple Leaf race where he was second behind back of the neck, you know, he was racing open. And then last time in the MGM, they closed him up. They had looked like a can't see back or something on him. It was hard to see on the video clearly, but they changed the bridle on him. And clearly that didn't work because... He, he went bonkers on the lead. Uh, I could see maybe a bridal change back and a uh, a much better effort from a Curie D. And we're going to move on to race number nine, which is the British Crown Open Pace, $600,000 on the line. And uh, here we get to see the Bulldog, Bulldog Hanover, Matt. <laughs> All right. I don't know what the there, – there's nothing really I can add right now. Uh, people have already formed <clears throat> their own opinions of this horse. Uh, going into the race of the Red Mile and then coming out of that last race of the Red Mile. So I don't know what else to add. I say we just go right into a video clip and watching him get beat at the Red Mile. Yeah, I mean, listen, he definitely got beat here, but, you know, 26, 52, 119 on the lead doing all the work with a really good horse sitting behind you, there's a good chance you're going to lose. I mean, it's that's the way I look at it. You know, the, you know, the race set up perfect for Alley White Hanover and he delivered. If Alleywick Hanover's on the lead and he goes 26, 119, 52, 119, and Bulldog Hanover's in the pocket, I think he wins. You know, that's the way I see it. I, I think Bulldog Hanover's on his home track here. Four for four this year, six for 10 last year, four for five the year before. He loves it here. Alleywick Hanover, you know, he's okay. Two for six career over the track. I mean, listen, I think it'll be a nice, a good matchup again. I think Alleywick Hanover will certainly give him a, a really good run for his money. I just believe that, you know, unless Bulldog's going to do all the work again and, and it's going to be tough on him, you know, then I think he's going to win. And I don't think he's going to have to do all the work here because I see a horse like Tattoo Artist right to his outside who I feel feel pretty confident that, you know, he's gone into the front. I see, you know, Alleywag I think will be leaving, you know, I'm sure one of the other ones will leave. And I think Dexter Dunn's going to play more of a uh, float away kind of tactic here and, and try to, either brush in the middle of the race or gobble them up late. I mean, you know, that, that's, that's what's worked so successfully for him in, in prior races is kind of uh, floating out, waiting for others to to uh, clear the lead or yield or whatever, and then come with like a, you know, a bull rush, you know, to seize command uh, that, you know, that didn't happen at the Red Mile. So maybe that, uh, maybe that did factor into, you know, uh, him losing because he was, he was basically, you know, uh, cutting a, like you said, cutting a, a wicked pace on the front end, basically, you know, every step of the mile. I don't blame 
uh, Dexter done for, for employing those tactics. Uh, you know, I think he had to, but, um, but again, like I said, people have formed uh, uh, their opinions of why he lost uh, and, and if he'll bounce back. I guess uh, he won't be one to nine probably because people might be a little, people won't be scared off a little bit. And do I fall in that category of being scared off a little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not kidding you. I'm going to use Ali Wack Hanover also because we know Ali Wack Hanover. If there's any horse I was going to beat him, you know, it, it, it was Ali Wack Hanover. It's not like a horse that really did not, you know, really have any viable reason for beating him, you know, uh, uh, coming, stepping up huge and winning. So, I mean, it was the trip sitting Ali Wack Hanover who's proven that he can go with these, or at least, you know, keep up with Bulldogs. So I'm going to look for the same type of result where maybe Bulldog, you know, Hits the front at some point during the race, and then Ali Wack Hanover can can you know have a second or a third move and gun him down. So I'm going to use three and six. I'm Kean Bulldog Hanover, and we're moving on to race number ten. It's the preferred two pace here. They go for thirty four thousand dollars a Canadian, and it's a pretty nice field. Uh, you know, American history is a former Breeders' Crown winner over this track. I'm pretty sure, and. Uh, Strong group of horses here. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time on this race. Uh, I'll say that I went three deep here with the five, six, and the eight. I kind of prefer the eight carbine the most. You know, five to two on the mono line doesn't get me too excited, but I felt like last time he, he put in a decent effort, you know, moving up to the open class. You know, you, you know, sometimes they move up from the condition, the, the mid-level condition rank to the open and, you know, you, you don't get that really strong, like, uh, let me try to go down the road kind of effort because they, they kind of want to feel it out. And it, and it was a new driver driving that week, Bob McClure drove. Now we're getting Todd McCarthy back in the bike who had driven him in the past in uh, at the Meadowlands. And what I also think is interesting is Todd McCarthy sticking around. All the other uh, uh, American drivers are, are out of here after the last British Crown race. Todd McCarthy is sticking around to drive this one for Tony Alanya, and I think that's uh, – pretty strong call i mean yeah that can usually be used as a telling sign it's not like he's sticking around for hours and, you know and you're gonna miss a flight or something like that but uh i i see your point um if you like carbine as a top choice i wouldn't be that worried that he's gonna be too short well he is the mock five to two more than my favorite but i think the five six and eight are probably gonna split the money equally so you know i could see you getting five to two or three to one on that horse uh, i also went three deep i used uh the only horse we have in common is the six Codename Cigar Box. I looked for a couple prices here. I also used the two uh, commanding officer. Yeah, I know he's bumping up to the to the preferred slash open level, but uh, I mean he's just been very very sharp in his last couple races. Uh, he does draw for the inside, and you know that's an okay post. Um, Louis Philippe Wa is back driving, and uh, I, I can just see him being close up and uh, you know finding his seam and, and picking some horses off maybe picking them all off and Mappo's lion who uh, might be overlooked in the wagering a little bit. I think he's every bit as good as the other main contenders being the five, six, eight, maybe the nine. Uh, and he, I think he'll be the one that offers the, the, the most value. And he is, he is a proven entity at this level. So I went three deep two, six and seven. Why don't we take a look at my pick uh, five ticket here, $100,000 guaranteed pick five. And it's worth noting that we'll have free PPs for this card. And actually Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at Woodbine Mohawk Park. We'll have free PPs all three days, drf.com slash harness. You can see my ticket up there is a $7.20 play for a 20 cent ticket. Um, you could certainly throw a few more numbers into race six and, you know, you know, it still won't cost you that much money, maybe 12 or $14. But uh, I'm going with a, a, a nice budget play of 720 King Bulldog Hanover. Yeah, my ticket's a little bit pricier uh, at $24. And that's very, remember, it is for a 20 cent base play. You talked about uh, spreading in the first leg with uh, five, you know, five, five live horses, uh, hopefully. Uh, keying by the missile, uh, spreading again in that open trot race, um, kind of uh, uh, wimping out and using uh, uh, alley wag and bulldog, <laughs> but uh, and then using uh, a couple prices in the uh, tenth race, uh, three horses in total, but the two looking the two of the seven, you know, as a price play. So twenty four bucks, um, you know, it could pay a it could it could pay a little or it could uh, 
you know, it can connect for something nice. So that's the fun in following along with these multi-race wagers, especially pick fours and pick fives. Sometimes, uh, you know, you are, you are very pleasantly surprised when you see those will picks. I'm thinking I put a $7 ticket. You played a $24 ticket. I'm thinking maybe we're paying you too much money here. You know, $24 ticket. Wow, you, you must have a deep wallet there. Oh, <laughs> these tickets that I see on social media where people put $400, $600 into it, you know, and they claim to be master handicappers. Uh, those are the ones that make me chuckle. $24 is not far-fetched for a five-race sequence, I don't think at all. And uh, I, I already started saving so I'll be able to make a nice, uh, you know, nice little deposit on Saturday, reload, you know, and, and get fiery. You got to make that deposit on Friday so you can play the Brutus Crown races on Friday and on Saturday. You got to play both. Don't forget two-year-olds on Friday. That is correct. Twelve Brutus Crown races this weekend at Woodbine Mohawk Park. Post time is 7 p.m. on both nights. Eight of those races are on Saturday, which is what we covered. We looked at the pick five the late pick five which is a hundred thousand dollars but there's also an early pick five on both nights hundred thousand dollar guaranteed free pps again drf.com slash harness good luck